Welcome, brothers and sisters, to this important message that the Lord has given me earlier today to share. And this is not no new great revelation, but what this is is a remembrance to that in which the Lord our God has already revealed, has already opened up to us in his word. And we see time and time again great expositions of men of God. We see time and time again great expounding upon the truths that is written within God's word. And we know that these are truths that are not new necessarily, but that have been there. And the diving deeper within those truths, the nuggets of jewels and rubies and diamonds and gold and silver that's within the contents of the heart of God, continue, continue to be found, continue to be polished off, continue to be brought forth to the open eye of those who are walking in spirit and in truth. So with all that being said, I just want to declare and remind all of us these powerful truths that God reminded me of deeply today with much heartfelt conviction. We're going to go to Romans chapter 2 to the very closing portions of that of an uncircumcised heart and a circumcised heart and what that even looks like or what that even means. That being of the inward change versus the outward religion or the outward appearance of being something that's not genuinely within. And if we all can be honest, there must be more that is needed to be done on our hearts even today. As we see, there are flaws. There are flaws. There are sins. There are issues in which need to be dealt with and which God's almighty hand can deal with. And through the Holy Spirit within our hearts and by the power of Jesus Christ, so too it is. He is doing just that if we give those things to him, if we lay them at his feet, if we begin to change our ways in true repentance and sorrow for those wicked ways. Now, let's dive into that word in Romans chapter 2, and let us pray before doing it. Father God, we know that you see us today. We know that you're with us today, and we also know that you are purging out our inward man, that you are taking out the things that are displeasing to you, and that you are strengthening us for your service. You are preparing us for what you have prepared ahead of us. And I praise you for being with us and bringing us through all that you brought us through, for guiding us through what we're going through now, and for having everything figured out for what's around the corner. We entrust this word into your hands. We entrust our hearts and our lives and our souls and everything into your hands. And we praise you for not dealing with us as our sins deserve, but for giving us mercy and forgiveness and true change by giving us your spirit and a new heart within. In Jesus' mighty name and breath, we give you glory, Father. Amen. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, family and friends, everyone everywhere. Let's go to Romans chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 25 through close, 25 through close, and I believe that's 29, and it states this, circumcision benefits you if you observe the law, but if you are a lawbreaker, your circumcision has become uncircumcision. Now, we in America and other countries, we know that what circumcision is and how it is cutting of the foreskin of the man's or the male's genitalia. This is what he's referring to here as it being instructed by the law of Moses, but also he's going deeper than that into the spiritual realm, dividing the temporal from the eternal, the spiritual from the physical. And we see this taking place as he explains going further. Verse 26. So if an uncircumcised man keeps the law's requirements, will not his uncircumcision be counted as circumcision? A man who is physically uncircumcised, but who keeps the law, will judge you who are a lawbreaker in spite of having the letter of the law and circumcision. For a person is not a Jew who is one outwardly, and true circumcision is not something visible in the flesh. On the contrary, a person is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is of the heart, by the spirit, not the letter. That person's praise is not from people, but from God. And we can all say amen and hallelujah to that one as we can to all this word. So we see there's a big difference between outward profession, 
religious pharisaical devotion from that in which is sought after on the external versus that which is true and genuinely done and completed on the internal. Now, we all fall short of God's glory. This is why we need Jesus. We all, if we've been in the faith for long, probably have played the Pharisee, probably have played the judgment role of judging others, have seen the flaws of others instead of seeing the flaws within ourselves. This is a sin. This is something that needs to be dealt with. I've been guilty of this more times than I would care to admit, more times than I could even admit than I know. And we need to know that God alone is sovereign. He alone is judge. And he gave that judgment authority to his son, Jesus, who died for us, who rose for us, who's ascended at his right hand and is coming back for us as that very judge. And he alone has the ability and the authority to do all judgment when it comes to that of the soul, heaven or hell. But he's given us a discernment through the spirit with that inward man to judge outwardly the fruits in which this is even talking about through Paul. We see that on the external, there are religious things that are done. There are exercises. There are rituals. There are traditions that are followed that have been passed down by man. But internally, when the Holy Spirit has his way in a believer's life, when there is a transformation There is a true change. There is a true difference. There is something new that happens in that soul, in that person. And we find that in Ezekiel 36, where he says he will put a new heart within us. He will put his spirit within us. He will breathe life again into us, and he will write his law upon our hearts. And he will fulfill that very law through his Holy Spirit. We see in John chapter 3, the the Gospel of John, we see Jesus telling Nicodemus an old, old Pharisee, an old scholar and teacher of the Jewish law, Judaic law. And we see that he even, he even must have been born again. He didn't understand. He asked Jesus, can an old man such as myself go into my mother's womb again? That's nonsense. He said it sarcastically, but Jesus retorted and told him, no, but you must be born again from above, from heaven. And today that is the same truth. For as the wind goes to and fro, and nobody knows where it goes but sees the reaction, so too it is those who are born of the Spirit and are born again. We all were born to a family. We all were born into a physical realm of this earth. We all have a bloodline. We all have been born into traditions and culture and different things like that. So we all have had an upbringing. That's the first birth. But unless we are born again by the Holy Spirit inwardly, that everything we do, no matter how good it may seem or appear to be, is death. And unless we be born again, says Jesus, we will not see the kingdom of God. We will remain in our sins and we will die. But God does not want that for us. That's why he sent Jesus. And we find in Jeremiah, it also talks about the new heart, giving a new life. And we see it through all the prophetic books and through many areas of scripture. The New Testament is dealing with this greatly on the flesh versus the spirit, the physical versus the, versus the spiritual. And we see Paul really kicking it off in this Romans chapter 2 with talking about that of the circumcision and the uncircumcision. Talking of the inward man versus the outward man. Talking about genuine love for God and Jesus with sincerity versus that of hypocrisy. Versus that of insincerity. Versus that of tradition, religion, false religion at that. But a repetition of rituals. Not a heart devoted to helping the orphans and the widows and the needy and staying unblemished by this world. See, that's true religion as it's written in James. And you're saying, where are you going with all this? Well, I'm really not going much of anywhere. Besides the simple fact is the Father's heart wants us all to be reminded that we need to have sincere devotion to himself through his son, Jesus, that because he loved us and gave the best part of himself and gives us his word through reconciliation of the blood of Christ, we can read this word. We can have eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts hearts to grow in. We can apply this truth and walk it out through Jesus in the Holy Spirit. He wants us to be reminded that because he loves us, because he's proven that love, because we've tasted and seen that the Lord is good, will we not 
love him in return? Will we not lay our lives down? Will we not give him our all? Will we not seek his face? Will we not put off the outward appearances of religious acts and ritualistic traditions? And will we not truly, truly devote ourselves to prayer, to fasting, to seeking his face, to loving him, to calling out to him and talking to him without ceasing in all that we do? I'm guilty as much as anybody as in the falling into tradition or falling in to just going through the motions. But God wants more than the motions. He wants our full emotion. He wants our full heart. He wants our full mind. He wants our full soul. He wants our love. He wants everything because he, he is worthy and he gave us every bit of himself and he deserves every bit of us because everything we have is his. The breath we have, the heartbeat in our chest, we would not rise out of the bed in the morning. We would not lay our heads down at night if it was not, but by the grace and the mercy and the will of Almighty God. So let us consider these thoughts. Let us put them into our hearts. Let us take these words of truth that are more than thought and apply them to our lives. Let us seek God like never before. If we don't understand what being born again is, if we don't understand what these scriptures mean, it's time to hit our face. It's time to get on our knees. It's time to ask God who says we seek him with all our heart. He will reveal the truth. He'll teach us great and mighty wonders. He will show us the great parts of himself that we are seeking if we come sincerely to his throne and love him in return. If we come to him asking by faith, he will reveal these truths to you. He'll reveal these truths deeper to me and we can grow in grace. We can grow in the knowledge of Jesus and we can love like God loves and do what we're supposed to do because he has given us new hearts. He has put his spirit within us. He has paved the way through his son, Jesus. And he's saying we need to live out what we believe and truly, truly walk the way Jesus walked. Today is the day of salvation, brothers and sisters. Let us get serious about our Father's business in the mighty name of Jesus and go in peace today. Amen.